Hello, within this part we will focus on software timers and its implementation within FreeRTOS and uh, CMC SOS version 2 API. I'm starting from stm 32 IDE by uh, starting a new project. So I go to File, New, stm 32 Project and uh, I will use stm 32 l 47 76 RG, bar, uh, RG microcontroller and uh, it is soldered on the Nucleo L476 RG port which I'm using during this session. You can use instead uh, Cubemix and your preferred toolchain and uh, any other STM32 microcontroller. Uh, name of my exercise is 11 underscore SW underscore team TIM and uh, concerning pinout selection and the peripheral selection I will enable only the debug interface with additional serial wire output pin so system core says this debug trace asynchronous SW so to have those three lines and I will change the time based source for HAL library from Cystic to Timer 6 I need to enable FreeRTOS, WCMC's version 2 API. And within the configuration, I need to check whether the software timers are enabled. In this current version, the software timers are enabled by default. Additionally, we've got three other parameters, timer task priority, timer queue length, and timer task stack dev. Uh, so those three parameters I already described within the theoretical uh, part. In this field, uh, the most important one is this one, task priority. It is important to select the priority of this task on the level which is uh, allowing us to execute, let's say scheduler, execute this task between other tasks. If it would be too low, the priority would be too low and other tasks uh, will never go to the blocked state, it might happen that the software timers will be, let's say, serviced in a not proper way. This default 2 is really too low versus the standard priorities which we are using within this CMC's OS v2, but let me continue with this too low value and show you the negative effect of it which could be quite positive in terms of uh, an education. So let's go to the task. So we will define only one. So I would, uh, let's say, change the name of it, of this default task into the task one. Priority normal, uh, stack size 256 words, like in other exercises, and uh, the default task start task one. That's it. And we need as well to specify one software timer. For this, uh, I'm going to timers and semaphores tab and within timers section, I would add my timer. I would keep the default settings and that's it. That's all components which we would like to select within the configurator. So I, I will generate the code and we need to open the main.c file. If it's not open automatically, I can find it within the core source main. Let's continue with code processing. This is our main.c file. If I scroll down, I can see two components already created. So our task one and uh, timer one. Then within main after hardware initialization, I can see the creation of timer one and its assignment to the callback, which would be called once uh, the timer will let's say, overflow and uh, type of it. So the periodic uh, in our case, and then there is our, let's say, task creation. And if we go below, we can see our standard task entry uh, function. And below we can see as well the callback function, which would be called once the timer will be overflowed. It is it is created as well automatically. Please remember that uh, the callback function of the timer should not be a blocking function. So we should uh, avoid here to put any delays uh, and uh, let's say too long uh, coding the information within uh, this callback should be very short and precise. So I would use here only sign of life. So task action and uh, 
within task action we will send C over selected interface. I would implement task action in a, on a while after, after basic operations. Uh, then how to start the software timer because it is created but not started yet. I can use the initialization part of any of the tasks. What is important is that it is not allowed to stop nor start timer, software timer from the interrupt. This is why we are not using them in this exercise. As a result, if you try to do this, uh, you will exit from the function with the negative value or status underscore t type, which is an information that uh, there is something wrong. We will start our software timer within the initialization part of our task one. And to start the software timer, we can use function os timer start. And to do this, uh, we need, let's say, two arguments. First is a handler, and the second one is number of ticks. So in our case, milliseconds, because our tick within this, uh, this series of exercises, this training is one millisecond. So I would use 1000, so in fact, one second, and the timer is started. Okay, and then within our, let's say, task function body, I would first wait two seconds, sending the task to the blocked state, and I would send some, let's say, sign of life. So this is task one, so I would just send one. That's it. This is the complete code. And what is an expected result? An expected result is the following. As our task one would be, in fact, uh, executing something once per two seconds, so I am expecting that I would see on my communication interface, on my, let's say, terminal, one displayed once per two seconds. And uh, in the meantime, I should see two C letters on the same terminal sent by the callback from the software timers as uh, let's say the software timer is periodic and its period is 1000 milliseconds so this is the next unexpected result so let's see whether it will work so i would compile the code okay as expected there is an error because we have not implemented yet task action so let's do it so in my case I would use ITM interface ITM up ITM send char and then message and after this I would as well use the same function to send as um, sign of new line to have each sign of life within separate line okay and we need to put the prototype above this part is quite okay for this purpose because it's a private function prototypes Okay, let's try to build it once again. Now it's much better. Zero errors, zero warnings. So let's start a debug session. My board is already connected, so I press a bug icon. Within debugger settings, I'm enabling serial wire viewer, SWV. I configure the clock to the used one, so the 4 MHz. Apply and OK. Okay, being within debug perspective, I'm selecting the SWV ITM data console. If you cannot see this, please find it using this quick access on top, SWV, and you select this line with the monitor icon on the left side. Once you select it, please configure it using this button, and please select the stimulus port to zero. Then please start trace and start your application. Okay, let's pause it and let's analyze what we've got. Um, display my main.c file, both task and callback, and let's analyze it. What we can see? We can see at the beginning C coming from the software timer. Uh, then we've got one from task. Uh, you can observe that uh, this one is coming once per two seconds. In the meantime, we can see two occurrences of the callback, which has the period of 1000 milliseconds. 
so it is working like expected. But analyzing this, do we cover all of the, let's say, potential risks? The answer is unfortunately no, because please have a look. We've got a protection here, which is uh, this OS delay. OS delay in this place causes this task one sent to blocked state. If this task is sent to blocked state, there is a space to other tasks with lower priorities. Among those, uh, let's say, tasks with lower priorities is this task responsible to pass information to the, let's say, from task to the software timer. This is, um, let me come back to, to this point and uh, task and uh, the config parameters. As you remember from the theoretical part, uh, the software timers uh, are using, let's say, its own task, which is managing the communication between the tasks and uh, the software timers. All the commands related to the software timers are sent via separate queue, which is defined within this line. The most important is, in fact, this timer task. If this priority is too low, it may happen that it will be never executed. So let's do a short experiment. I would replace this OS delay with HAL delay. So in fact, my function will be not sent to the blocked state, but it will remain either in run or in ready state. In this case, scheduler will always select only task one as the only one with the highest possible priority. So let's have a look what would be the difference now. Now I can, let's say, start a debug session. Oops. Data console, start tracing and start an application. You see, there is no software callback. Once per two seconds, I can see the signals from our task one and that's it. The callback cannot be executed as the software timer is in fact not started. It is not started as a software timer task cannot be executed as it has too low priority. So let's have a look how we can correct it. If we scroll up and we will check what is in fact the numeric numerical value of this OS priority normal, it is 24. So let's come back to our iOS, uh, let's say configuration file and let's change this to you know, 20, into the 24. So it will, let's say that the priority of the software timer task will be the same like the priority of the task we are using in our application. So after this, I would uh, regenerate the code and I would compile it. Please have a look. I still have this hard delay here. But in this case, even if this task one will never go to the blocked state, it will be either in run or in ready state. But in this case, my ta software timer task will have the same priority like task one. So scheduler will select task one or a software timer task. And there would be a chance to execute this callback because software timer will be started. Okay, so let's uh, now start a debug session. ITM data console, start trace and run. Okay, this is not a result I expected. So let's let's exit. So let's modify the priority of timer task to 24 to be equal to other other tasks which are present in the code. I regenerate the code. So at the moment we will have in fact three tasks. Task one, software timer task and idle task. Idle task has lowest possible priority, but uh, the other two tasks, task one and software timer task, will have the same priority. And even if within our task one, we will keep it always in a run or ready state, there would be a space for a software timer task, which would, let's say, start and communicate with the software timer. So let's uh, start a debug session before I would compile it. Start team bunker, then uh, ITM data console, start trace, and start the application. And now we can see the situation as expected. So, two occurrences of a callback from software timer once per second, and then uh, once per two seconds, I can see the action from task one. 
So as you can see, it is really important once you are designing an application of usage of software timers to uh, properly configure those parameters, especially uh, this timer task priority, to have it in a range of other tasks which are present in the system. That's all for this part. Thank you for watching this video.